Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm in Christmas gift mode. A few months ago, Rockler released this sunflower clock plan for free over their Twitter account. And at first I saw it, I knew I immediately it was going to be perfect for a gift for someone in my family. So here I am making this thing and of course building it entirely by hand. This is pretty straightforward. Um, the Petals are made using yellow heart. Well, I don't have a bunch of this floating around, so I reached out to the guys at Bell Forest Products, and of course they had the perfect stick for me. Um, great little, I don't know if it's necessarily a profound tip, but this uses quarter inch thick stock to make all the petals, and I'm gonna need 24 of these pieces. So I found a piece that was actually eight quarter. This is actually, this came S4S from Bell Forest, and it's a full two inches thick. So what that means, instead of having to resaw this wider board, rotate it 90 degrees and cut off these strips from here like this. And I have, I can very easily slice away quarter inch strips that's gonna give me enough width to make my petals and enough to get about six out of each one of these strips, meaning I need four strips. Now this is also a particularly effective method if say you need some quarter sawn stock. Well, it's pretty easy to find uh, flat sawn eight quarter when you flip it on its side, you're looking at the quarter sawn face. So if I wanted to rip these strips off and glue them together side by side, I now have a quarter sawn board. This could be a great way to make like drawer bottoms and stuff, but it's the way I'm gonna end up making all these petals instead of resawing out a particularly hard exotic wood like yellow heart. The other thing you're gonna need is quarter inch cherry and quarter inch wingate. Now you can substitute any variety of, of species for this. This happens to be what Rockler calls for in their plans. I happen to already have some wingate and I've got lots of cherry floating around the shop. So these, I actually resawed um, a thicker piece of wingate, thicker piece of cherry, match plane them, glued them together to make panels. You're gonna need an eight inch circle out of the wingate and a 13 inch circle out of the cherry. Now in the Rocco pans, they call for using cherry plywood, quarter inch cherry plywood. That would work as well. As I said, I don't have any quarter inch cherry plywood, but I got lots of cherry. So I'm making the back out of solid for this. This I just uh, marked from, I uh, put a straight edge from corner to corner in both directions, marked an X for the center, used a compass to lay out the 13 inch circle and the eight inch circle on the winge, and we'll cut those out later. For now, I gotta finish one more rip cut to get the pieces for my pedals. Okay, there's my fourth strip and that's gonna give me enough material to make 24 petals for my clock. I can move that block of yellow heart out of the way. Now, whatever stock you need to get for these petals is obviously gonna vary pretty dramatically. What you ultimately need is, again, quarter inch thickness. I'll plane this down to a final quarter inch thickness. The individual petals are actually four and a quarter inches long. I'm not gonna lay this out exactly right now. I just wanna get some basic measurements. They're four and a quarter inches long and they taper on both sides symmetrically to create a little petal. On the far side, they need to be one and three eighths of an inch wide and they taper down to the near side to five eighths of an inch. So in getting your stock, you're gonna need enough to get 24 four and a quarter inch long pieces and a maximum dimension of one and three eighths of an inch. So for now, I wanna go ahead and flatten faces, get parallel faces and get down to a quarter inch final thickness.
Now in addition to the wood, you are going to need some hardware for this. You need a three-quarter inch face or three-quarter inch thickness face clock mechanism. And that comes with all the fastening hardware. And then you need the two popsicle stick hands. Now Rockler sells these a well and in a metal, uh, both white and black face. And I actually found this a little misleading. On the Rockler website, it lists them in brass and black. And what I really wanted was white. Well, what they don't say is that it's black one face, white on the other face. I ended up buying both the brass and the black just in case I wanted to mess around with it or if I ended up painting them. You can also just use popsicle sticks if you happen to have some floating around that aren't stained red from your strawberry popsicles or purple from your grape popsicles, they will work just as well. Now, again, we'll include the links to that hardware. The important thing is that you've got uh, a mechanism that has a spindle long enough to be able to go through three quarter inch uh, material, but no thicker than three quarter inch material. So grab your turning saw or a coping saw and saw out both the wing gate and the cherry circle close to the line, as close as you can. And then you need to follow up with a spoke shave to bring it right back to the line. The closer, more consistent your saw cut will be, the faster the spoke shaving work is gonna go. Certainly the circles don't have to be perfect, but you do want them to look like circles. Just make sure you pay attention to the grain direction. As you work around the circle, the grain direction is gonna reverse on you several times. So you're gonna work up to the top and then you have to work from the side back to the top and from here down to the bottom and from here down to the bottom working all the way around the circle it's really four different grain direction switches that you have to be very conscious of as you're working with that spoke shape keep the spoke shape setting light and you'll see when the grain starts to reverse on you and you can switch and that's what's nice about the spoke shape it's just really easy to switch from pushing to pulling you don't have to flip anything around in the vise Now, as I said, I've got to make 24 of these little pedals. So here's an opportunity to kind of set up an assembly line and where a jig can be really beneficial. So the first thing I did was create a stop block here on my bench hook that allows me to take one shot end of this. I've shot the end of each one of these strips, drop it into the bench hook right up against my stop block using the actual fence on my bench hook, pressing the saw plate up against that, I saw off a piece that is just a hair over four and a quarter inches, my final dimension. I'll then run down to the shooting board, square that up, and that should give me four and a quarter inches. And if I'm off for a 32nd, even a 16th of an inch, it's really not going to make that big of a difference. Now, from there, the, I had to create the first one to give me a pattern to work from. So I just laid a center line on the piece, knowing that it needed to be one and three eighths inch wide at the top and five eighths wide at the bottom. I laid that out from the center line so I had a symmetrical piece. And then I used my scrub plane to work real close down to the line and then followed up with a smoothing plane to take it right back to the line to give me one master pedal. Again, it's four and a quarter inches long, one and three eighths at the top, and five eighths at the bottom. With this master pedal shape laid out, I could then use a little bit of plywood to create a pattern. I've got to go at this with two passes on the shooting board. The first one 
takes the square block, drops it in place, and cuts the first side. Then I flip the whole thing over and I take the block that has one tapered side, drop it in and it cuts the second tapered side. And you can see I've got it labeled two and one to make it stupidly obvious which one goes first. So I can very quickly just kind of go through all the parts, hitting all side ones on all 24 pieces, flip this over against my shooting board and hit all side twos on the 24 pieces until end up with a bunch of pieces that are exactly the same. So using my radius lines here, I can walk my way around the circle, just setting little tick marks at each intersection. I suppose I could actually use my dividers to, to you know, make a dimple in here or whatever, but honestly, this is just fine. Because I'm going to then connect the lines all across to give you the same layout that you get with that paper template the Rockler gives you. And we come back to the beginning. So now, as I line this mark with this mark, and as long as everything continues to go through the center, you know you've got it lined up. So you're just lining up the little the tick marks you made on the edges through the center mark. Work your way all the way around. And there we go. So now I've got this pie shaped into 12 segments. Next thing I want to do is set my compass to a radius of three and a half inches and strike that circle off the center. And this is going to tell me where to line up the petals. This gives this line, this intersection along the center line, tells me where the petal should line up. I'm centering it on there. So every one of these petals is going to come and butt up to that circle. And that circle is just inside the diameter of the winge piece. So I've got it on this piece of plywood underneath it, you'll notice. And I did that because what I want to do, and actually I should have done this while I was laying out these straight lines, is I want to transfer these lines out onto the plywood behind it. I'll just do one for now. And the reason for that is now this intersection, this three and a half inch circle, I'll center this on there and then I can look at the line that I drew in the plywood and just center it by eye there as well. I can do the same thing down here, center it on that intersection, center it on the line there and that tells me exactly where to position it. So I'm just going to carry on, retrace all of my lines and you'll position these in the 12 points around the circle. And now with those 12 in place, I just come back and put the next 12 just centered in between each one. And here it's real easy to just line everything up by eye. Okay, and then I've got this little piece, I drop that in the middle, that takes up the gap, and then this guy goes right over the top. 
And that's how the whole thing goes together. Now, obviously this is a dry fit. You know, once you start using glue, it'll be a little easier to get things to stick in place. I'm just gonna use regular old super glue for this. I don't think there needs to be anything real fancy. Um, the other thing I do need to do, however, is drill the hole for the clock mechanism. I'm gonna need a 5 16 bit, and I wanna do that before I assemble everything, um, just because it makes things a heck of a lot easier to do one piece at a time with these centers already lined up. This little guy, I can just drill a hole anywhere through that. And then as I'm gluing it all together, I can actually use the spindle of the clock to line everything up and make sure that this is centered properly. Ta-da, we have a sunflower clock. Holes are all lined up, everything's glued firmly in place, and I'm ready to apply a finish. I've just done a, just a quick test to make sure uh, the clock does feed through appropriately, we're all good to go. For small kind of keepsake items like this, the finish doesn't need to be very durable. A lot of times, I'm focused on something, uh, certainly that looks good, but something that dries really quickly. Because let's face it, Christmas time, I tend to be behind the eight ball. I'm actually a little ahead of schedule this year. I'm still gonna choose something that dries fast, and it's generally something like shellac or a lacquer. Now, with all of these kind of exposed little nooks and crannies and things, I think I'm gonna be much better off spraying. And in that instance, a good spray lacquer is a great solution for this. I prefer Watco uh, aerosol lacquer. There's a bunch of different lacquers at the big box store. This is one that's available. This just goes on a lot smoother. Some of the other cheaper ones tend to immediately go to that orange peel look. Nice light coats with this is really all you need. I'm gonna apply three coats and a light 600 grit sanding sponge in between, just kind of scuff up the surface, and reapply the coat. One of the beautiful things about lacquer is it's one of the finishes that does burn into the next coat. So that sanding you do in between layers really kind of smooth things out, but you don't have to worry about it scuffing up the surface because the next layer is just gonna chemically burn into that and you get one uh, nice uh, consistent thickness layer throughout. It's just a super fast finish that can be reapplied in like 30 minutes. The other thing that I like about this lacquer is it does very little to the color. And Winge in particular, it looks really pretty in its unfinished state, nice chocolatey brown, but a finish that's gonna soak in a whole lot turns it like basically to ebony and you lose that chocolate color and you just end up with black. This is gonna maintain that nicely. And that my friends completes this project. The uh, clock hardware, pretty easy to install. It comes in with a, a, comes with a built-in hanger. There's a rubber washer that goes between the mechanism and the back of the clock just to prevent things from slipping around. You uh, put a brass washer on the spindle and then tighten down the, the nut that actually fastens everything to the clock itself. That's a little bit fidgety just because it's so small. Those that have smaller fingers may have a little bit easier time with this. The hour hand slips on, then the minute hand, and then it screws all down with this little brass nut on top. It's all relatively straightforward because the hands themselves have different shaped holes that fit in different parts of the, uh, the spindle or arbor of this uh, mechanism. Requires a uh, AA battery to start running again, but uh, that's it. Real simple. Uh, hang it however you want on the wall through this little uh, hook on the back. And pretty straightforward project, but some fun little techniques along the way. First and foremost, just creating the jig to create you know, all the, the repeated parts here, sawing out circles, refining those circles. It's a lot of fun. So if you like the look of this clock, by all means, build one yourself. I've included the plans from Rocker. Thank you for Rocker for making these free and uh, happy building and happy holidays. Get in back.